Hello everyone and welcome to our Mastermind Tips and Tricks monthly webinar. We are very happy you are here today as we'll be looking at the many uses of Mastermind. Our presenter today is Rob Maclack, who the majority of you, if not all of you, know. And just as a reminder, we'll be holding these webinars for our customers on the third Thursday of every month. And we welcome any suggestions, ideas, and of course any questions you may have. So please feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, or post them on our Mastermind users group on LinkedIn. Now, without further ado, here's Rob. All right. Thank you very much, Carnegie. And welcome, everyone, to our first monthly end-user uh, Mastermind webinar. Our title uh, is The Many Uses of Mastermind, and our aim today is to help you get more value from both Goldmine and Mastermind by passing on some idea starters about what you can do with Mastermind to uh, make using Goldmine pay off better. As the, as the primary user of Mastermind in your company, which many of you are, we want to reach out to you today, say thank you for using Mastermind, and offer you some additional ways you might use uh, Mastermind. But we also want to reach out to other people in your organization who can and should be getting more value from your Goldmine data, uh, whether through understanding it or managing it better, to, to make their jobs easier and more successful. I hope you'll feel free to share the recording from today's session with a number of other people in your organization when you receive the link about a day from now. The, uh, as I said, the core of today's presentation will be an overview of a number of different ways to use Mastermind, ways that are uh, relevant to various job functions, though they all relate to increasing your productivity with Goldmine. Today, we're just briefly going over the topics, but in the next several months, we'll be exploring these ideas more in depth to help you find more value in Mastermind and Goldmine together. Even more importantly, we want to develop more ways for you, our end users, to benefit from each other's experience and build an interactive community of Mastermind users. So uh, before we start on the topics for today, I'd like to introduce you to a few resources we've put together to support our, uh, our user community. So if you, if you haven't done so yet, um, we'll invite you to get familiar with our website. Uh, mastermind.net, on which we offer a, a blog section called Mastermind Insider. If you receive the blog by subscription or read it occasionally on the website, please add your comments to our articles or request coverage of topics you'd like to see there. Uh, it's a great way to um, uh, create a, a conversation that can build upon the actual, uh, you know, in the field experience of Mastermind users. Also, while you're there, take note of the the various report writing and data manipulation services we offer under the user support area on the website. Today, I also want to make a pitch for you to join our LinkedIn user group, which is aptly named Mastermind Users Group, on which we hope to uh, moderate some user-initiated discussions. There are a large number of you attending this webinar today. Um, we almost, in fact, we almost maxed out our, our subscription on GoToWebinar. Um, so my hope is that many of you will go to LinkedIn today and search for uh, the group name Mastermind Users Group and join um, so that we can start the ball rolling. Um, uh, start a discussion there or join one. Um, one suggestion might be if you find any of the new features in our version 7, either uh, which was released last October, either really useful or if you find them really confusing. Um, start a discussion and let's see what others have to say about it. Or if there's, if you have any ideas from today's webinar, um, uh, please I invite you to uh, to provide us some feedback there, and hopefully uh, we'll, uh, as I say, get the the community rolling there. And finally, uh, take note that our webinar today is meant to be a kickoff for a whole series of webinars covering the specific topics I'll go through briefly today, but also covering some. Um, topics that you, you that you request, uh, and I will even put up a list uh, here toward the end of some other suggested um, topics that we've come up with that you may want for us to prioritize above uh, even the ones that we already have uh, scheduled. Um, and that's part of the, the point of today's webinar. At the end, I'll ask you to go to our LinkedIn group page, sign in, and answer a poll about which topic you'd like to see us prioritize. If you don't see one you like today, feel free to suggest others in the comments section under the poll on, in, on the LinkedIn site. And the more specific you are about what you'd like to see, the easier it will be for us to include it in the program. 
let's jump right in here. So um, I'm, I'm going to start with just a quick overview of Mastermind. Um, working with lots of Mastermind users over the years since 1999 when we brought Mastermind on the market, we've noticed that our users sometimes tend to fall into using just a few aspects of Mastermind and then forget about it for other purposes. Uh, it's probably not deliberate, but you know you've got a particular problem you want to solve, you solve that problem, and then you forget about the, the broad tool set that you bought that actually um, um, solved that problem. So some of our users just use Mastermind for a specific set of reports or even a single report that they created a number of years ago and maybe make variations on it once in a while. Some use it only for periodic data cleanup and don't, don't use the reporting aspects of it. Some um, use it as an, an easy way to export selected data into Excel for transfer to outside users or to upload to Constant Contact or, or some other service. Some just do various reports on a particular type of uh, of profile record that can, it can be that narrow and and never get into other aspects of mastermind it's really strange because um, just like goldmine itself the uses of mastermind are so broad but often the actual usage tends to get narrow within a single organization you might be happily working away with all with your once a month mastermind static report while somebody two offices down is struggling with SQL queries or crystal reports or your sales manager is struggling to motivate the sales team to make calls and set appointments, but doesn't have the tools or information to, to back up his efforts. So the bottom line is please share. Uh, it's best to think of Mastermind as a set of tools listed out, uh, which I, I hear on the screen, rather than just one with a set of purposes as broad as, and Mastermind has a set of purposes as broad as Goldmine. Um, it's not exactly turnkey, as uh, you have to expect when Goldmine itself is such a uh, has such a wide uh, variety of situations that it's used in, um, in in you know every kind of business. Mastermind has to be flexible enough to handle all that variation in the usage of Goldmine. But even so, there is a large number of job specific templates, for example, that cover a lot of the uses of of Goldmine, and most reports or data management tools. Uh, only take a couple of minutes to build with Mastermind uh, at the time you need them. So um, uh, think of it as that broad set of tools. And yes, it is a report builder, a data cleanup tool, a way to make your goldmine data conform to whatever rules you set up. It's also a highly adaptable mass, uh, management console builder for goldmine. It's a replacement for SQL queries. Uh, it's a replacement for manual entry of information in Excel, which happens in every organization that we've seen. And sometimes it, it always surprises me whenever I see uh, an organization that has Mastermind that still has somebody on staff there who's hand typing information, uh, a lot of it coming out of Goldmine into Excel spreadsheets. Um, uh, and, and frankly, Mastermind is also a, a, a replacement for raw guesswork when you need an answer. Um, oftentimes what happens is, you know, as a sales manager, uh, you may not know how to build ad, uh, ad hoc reports out of out of uh, using Mastermind out of Goldmine, so you just you just guess. Um, uh, so it is Mastermind is all those things, um, but this doesn't quite get to the point of our our uh, topic uh, of our uh, webinar today, which is that we want to talk about job specific or issue specific reasons you might call on Mastermind to help you do something. So that's where we're going to get started now. So um, today we want to show some examples of how Mastermind gets used in all these different ways. Um, and these examples may not hit home exactly for you, but hopefully they provide some idea starters, as I said, for similar uses within your organization. The topics I intend to cover briefly here today, uh, and I'm going to, uh, when I say cover them, I'm going to talk about how uh, these are, again, just sort of idea starters to get you thinking about other broader ways for you to use Mastermind within your organization. And uh, in future webinars, we will actually go into these topics and other ones that you suggest um, more in depth. And bear in mind, we have a user group that ranges uh, from very uh, database and reporting savvy all the way down to, shall we say, not technical at all. So my, my intention here is to introduce these topics broadly um, as a way to expand your mastermind usage, but but I won't get into the nitty gritty technical detail unless that's unless we get that kind of a demand from uh, from our user group. Uh, 
Um, but I do intend to give you a taste of each one of these of these uh, topics that's on the on the uh, list here, uh, and you will have seen these already. So let's go right to the first one here. Uh, finding and activating uh, unworked leads. Now this is um, from our broad experience working with goldmine users. We know that whether you know it or not, you probably have sales opportunities in your goldmine that are not being worked. So the process for handling them, uh, if you have mastermind, even if you don't have mastermind, I'm not quite sure how you would uh, how you would do this. And, and in a lot of organizations, this function actually gets sort of neglected. And if you think about it, it's kind of strange. You uh, you work very hard. You spend a lot of money to get useful leads in your database, and yet, uh, as an organization, you might well not have a plan for managing those ones that fall through the cracks. But basically, the steps. Uh, if you've got mastermind of these. You visualize the territory. In other words, you get an overview of, of everything that's in. Uh, I'm going to say a territory. You could be looking at your whole goldmine database of, of leads, whatever whatever it is. Um, but within that, you, you, you find out, uh, we say analyze neglected leads. That means find the ones that have not been contacted within whatever the appropriate amount of time is um, that you consider a, a, that a live lead in your database ought to be um, ought to be contacted. Um, in the course of analyzing your neglected leads, you prioritize them. You figure out which ones are the hot lead, you know, should be the hot leads, but they're not being followed up on, and which ones are less so. And based on that, reassign or reschedule those leads. You might assign them to a different sales rep, or you might reschedule the calling on them. Um, but you, but when you do that, uh, depending on if you're if it's only a few, if it's only a handful that are getting moved around, that's one thing. If you are actually um, doing some some large scale movement of leads from let's say one territory to another, or one sales rep to another, um, which oftentimes really is is necessary, then you need to balance your territories. You still have to work within the constraints of we need all you know you want all of our sales reps to succeed, but balance that together with we also want to ma uh, maximize our potential sales. Um, and then um, this is something that you have to repeat. It's not a one-off uh, activity. Um, and again, that's why Mastermind is so ideal for doing this, because it gives you not only a uh, paint-by-numbers single way to, to, to do this, but it gives you a, uh, the tools that you can do this on an ongoing basis with, um, because uh, from month to month or from year to year, leads probably fall through the cracks for various different reasons and you need to find out why they're falling through, um, fix that issue, and also fix the, 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 uh, the uh, neglect that's happening with the specific ones that you're looking at. So how do leads get lost in the first place? A sales rep's most important asset, presumably, is, their, is the fresh batch of leads they get from marketing, but what happens if those leads get miscoded? or if the rep is somehow not aware of them, or if the rep you thought was working on them actually got working on something else and he thought that he thought was a priority. So of course most reps, um, fresh leads take precedence over old leads, um, but that means that the older leads are commonly going to get lost in the sales rep's calendar or be forgotten when other, another hot prospect comes along. So today's hot lead is tomorrow's um, neglected lead. Um, so using a variation on the last activity history report, which is what I'm going to switch to now, um, this is how we recommend you rediscover these, these leads and, and uh, make them active in your pipeline again. So I'm going to switch over and show you uh, Goldmine. And so in this demo database, now in this case, I'm going to generate a new report from scratch. I'm not going to do that for every one of the examples that we're running through today. Um, but uh, this helps me also to kind of give you a little exposure to some functionality that you may not be familiar with in Goldmine, um, or excuse me, in Mastermind. So uh, namely, what I'm starting with here is selecting the appropriate template to do the work that we want to, to uh, do in Goldmine. If you want to uh, deal with neglected leads in Mastermind, the, the typical set of reports that you want to work with are the ones that show you your your prospects by when they were last contacted. Now, 
when they were last contacted is a, is a, a freighted phrase, um, and I'm going to come back to that here in a moment. But uh, let's go ahead and, and pull and, and find out how to use, how to pull the right template for what we're going to use. So uh, I checked on history because I know that what I'm interested in logically is uh, records that either have not been contacted, in other words, there's no history for them, or the last history or the most recent activity for them is back some certain amount of time. Now, if I choose history and go over here and look at our overall list of history-related templates, it's a fairly long list within Mastermind. I, I don't remember how many there are, but it's certainly in the, in the 20s or so. So there's a lot of different templates built into Mastermind. Now, the one that we're going to look for is actually call, I already know it because I've made a note for it, it's going to be last completed call or last completed appointment or call, actually, it's the one I'm going to use. But if I don't know the name of that, then probably I'm going to need to use some search words, some keywords to find the template that I want. So if I put in the word last, for example, and hit search, it's going to narrow down my set of available uh, templates to include actually a range of reports that deal with last, you know, whatever, or, or most recent, uh, you know, whatever. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose the last completed call uh, uh, appointment or call report. Now, having chosen this template, um, let's uh, just briefly, I want to say, in Mastermind, when you have a template, when you're working with a template, that doesn't mean that you're stuck with a very specific set of fields. Um, a template does uh, stick you with a certain set of tables out of Goldmine. So clearly, in order to get the meaning of last completed appointment or call, we're going to need to be pulling information from the history table in Goldmine. But we're also linking to the contact level information. And so even though you're using this template, you can still check on whatever other fields you want to include or check off, for that matter, um, different ones. Uh, so actually, I'm going to, just for the, for the sake of it, I'm going to uh, un take this one off for, for, uh, um, to, help my, to help my process later on. Um, I'm going to also check on some other fields that we might want to uh, use as a consideration for uh, for figuring out well why were they not contacted so I might want to pull in the primary email address um, so I can see whether or not we've actually got a, a valid email address for them I'll pull in the phone number to again see whether we've got a val valid phone number for those for the ones that we didn't contact that we don't have a phone number for hey we want to be able to isolate those and and do some um, do some cleanup in our database uh, as a result of that. And then, of course, you might have within your own database whatever user-defined fields you've got that relate to, um, to, uh, your, um, well, to your leads so that you can prioritize um, going after the ones that have become neglected. So whatever other fields you check on, of course, they're going to be included. Uh, and then obviously in the Mastermind Create dialog, you're basically done. You can hit Finish and just pull that information. I'll go ahead and hit the Finish button, and we're going to overwrite one that already exists on, the, on this database because we're using a generic name. By the way, if you don't want to be always overwriting your Mastermind reports, either assign each one its own unique name as you create it, or at least once you get it organized the way you want it um, and that you're going to be calling it up again in the future, do a Save As uh, in Excel. Do a save as, always choose Excel macro enabled workbook. Uh, that's really important because that leaves your mastermind um, programming that's in the back end still active and functional for this, for this workbook. Um, uh, so always use macro enabled workbook. But then when you do the save as, choose a unique name for your workbook so that you'll, A, so that you'll know what it is, but B, so that it won't get overwritten when somebody else does a report that has a similar um, starts with a similar template. So this is the raw um, uh, last completed activity in Goldmine Report. And again, I'm not going to go into this in great detail because we have a number of topics that I want to sort of discuss here today. Um, but we will cover this in greater detail uh, in a future webinar. So, but just to kind of give you a sense of it. So when you run this very same report against your own database, you will have these very same three columns. You'll have a, some that are appointments, some that are calls, and some that have no calls or appointments at all in your database. Um, and uh, this is where the analysis starts. Now, um, this report pulls for every record in your, for every contact record in your database, one 
row in the in the query. So it pulls one record, and it includes the uh, you know the name and phone number and all the other fields that we did at the contact level, and just the information about the most recent call or appointment. Now, logically, that may be all you need to identify your top prospects that are not being contacted. Um, but you probably will need to, to uh, introduce other, um, other components of information. So for example, uh, I'm just going to take one here. I'm going to take our score field. Now the score field in, uh, in Goldmine, just to switch over to this demo database, this is, this is a, a, a field here that we use um, or that, that we uh, have set up so that and the end user, excuse me, so the account manager for this uh, record for this uh, uh, prospect would be able to score them A, B, C, or D. A very common sales activity um, or way within sales organizations to prioritize their leads or their uh, customers. So um, presumably if you've got A, B, or C, A, B, C, or D customers, you also can make sure that let's say the A customers get contacted every 30 days and the B customers get contacted every 60 days and so on or whatever, whatever the rule is that you want to set up. And your mastermind report is what makes it possible for you to measure and enforce that standard. So in this case, um, looking at the overall picture of this database, I've got 60 of them that have never been contacted. Uh, and by the way, certain record types might explain why they don't get contacted. So I'll pull the record type field in here because um, we, you know, we don't care whether we've got a completed call to employees. And we may not care, actually, at this level about past clients uh, who are defined in this case as, as people who we don't work with anymore, um, and maybe ones that have already been unqualified. We don't want to, we don't need to, to monitor those. But everything else that's in here, we want to work with. By the way, notice that our record type field is a bit of a mess here in one of our uh, additional, um, in one of our uh, topics later on. We're going to talk about that mess and how to clean that up. But I'm going to leave the versions of customer, prospect, suspect, and so on turned on here. Now that reduces the overall set of records that we're looking at in our database. Now we're down to 42 that have never been contacted. But still, these are 42 live, presumably, live uh, prospects or leads in our database. Those need to be followed up on. So what are you going to do about that? Well, first off, you probably are going to drill down and just get an overview and see who are these people that have never been contacted. Now you see all these empty fields in here. These are history fields that are empty because they've never been contacted. Um, there is literally no history for those, for those records, or at least no uh, calls or appointments. Um, and so the next logical action you're going to take with this uh, as a mastermind user uh, is, are a couple of possibilities. One is just simply drill through to the individual records and look at them more closely. So if I double click on McDonald Manufacturing, it goes to the record in Goldmine and you figure out um, you know, why, why has Nancy H. not made the call uh, not made a call to these guys. Well, uh, okay, it turns out that somebody else has made a call to them, and that's and that's probably the issue there. Um, <clears throat> um, switching back to our report here now, uh, and actually that brings up another point, which is that um, your in your case it may not be all that important. Um, it may not be all that important. Uh, if there has ever been a call, but you want to know, has there been a call where the result code was uh, something other than left a message or uh, not available or whatever? Um, you need to be able to um, do this uh, in some instances much in a much more refined way than simply was there a phone call before. And by the way, you know, Goldmine does have this built-in uh, summary tab here that gives you the date of their last contact or their last attempt. Um, and this is up. This uh, field is actually updated. This date is updated um, whenever a call is completed, an appointment is completed, or an email is sent out. Um, but uh, and that third one is kind of the trick one because if all you if if this means that you consider just sending out an email to be an actual contact with the customer, well, that can be pretty misleading when you go to find out. You know, are we actually in contact with this lead? or not, because sending out an email, uh, there's no guarantee at all that it was received and a uh, good chance that it was not. So with the mastermind report, we don't look at these dates. We don't look at the, the dates that are in here. We actually go to the history tab and look at um, uh, what history is there to indicate that they've actually been called. 
Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry, I was confusing before because I was on the pending tab before. So there is no call or, or uh, um, no call history here, um, which is why they show up on this list. Um, that is obviously something that needs to be addressed and that lead needs to be reassigned according to some logical priority. By the way, if you've got some large percentage of your database, you know, hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of records that fall into this none category, then um, you're probably not going to manage them all in one fell swoop. You're probably going to want to do them in sections. So, for example, uh, as I was mentioning before, you might want to choose, well, let's reassign the A priority, uh, you know, our A leads first, maybe schedule a call for these, get them going, then worry about the Bs, then worry about the Cs, and so on. And um, this is your mechanism for doing that. So we'll go into that in, in greater detail in a, in a future webinar. Um, but I want to I wanna quickly move on to our, to our next uh, topic here. So I want to get over here. And... Uh, oh, whoops. Okay, sorry about that. Need to get my uh, my screen up back up again. Oh, here we go. Okay, so uh, the next and the next topic is managing email marketing. So, uh, as I'm sure you know, Mastermind can be used throughout all stages of an email campaign. Whether you send emails through Goldmine, Outlook, Constant Contact, or, or Mailchimp, or uh, or if you use IntelliClick, which we'll talk about here uh, at the at the end of this list. Um, so the process looks something like this. You uh, start with a mastermind overview report that you can use to build a targeted email list by intelligently segmenting your database. And tell, by intelligently, I mean actually using the information in the database you know, to, to more specifically target who you want to send each individual message to. Rather than one broad list of everything, sending the same message to everybody, you might... Uh, uh, use Mastermind to segment your prospects by demographic or uh, what's called firmographic information. In other words, the you know the, the granular information about each firm in the database, um, or by you might use past purchasing behavior if you use a Mastermind history uh, a, a, a sale a completed sale report. You can use that as a means of targeting your list. So you're not just using demographic information; you're actually using their past behavior. Uh, as a means of fine-tuning your your uh, marketing message. Um, really, anything that's in Goldmine ought to become a component in deciding who you send which messages to. So uh, once you do that, then you, ins then you use that uh, segmentation to choose your target lists. Um, usually, you'll build Goldmine groups with them. Um, but uh, more importantly, even before then, you want to... Uh, uh, ensure that you have email addresses uh, in your database. So that's a pretty obvious thing. So uh, our mastermind report that I created here a moment ago actually includes the email addresses for um, the, or the primary email addresses for the contacts that we're on. And you can go right down that list, find the ones that are blank in the email address and so on uh, in the email. Uh, yes, in the email address and the primary email address in the record. Um, and take the next logical activity, which is assign somebody to go out and, and you know, make initial calls to get email addresses back into that list or uh, give that information to the sales rep and have them follow up on it. Um, but once you uh, have improved the quality of your email address list using this process, um, then the rest of the, the steps here are fairly straightforward. You use that uh, your segmentation to build Goldmine group. You can actually, if you're sending the email out of Goldmine, use that group as a means of sending out the email. Um, if you're exporting it, then again, you've already got it in Excel, so the export is already complete. You just have to upload it to uh, Constant Contact or whatever you're going to use. And then the rest of it is about tracking and actually handling the consequences of your email campaigns. So you you build reports that follow the results of the email campaigns using the, game, the Goldmine groups that you created. Um, remember, if you use filters to identify who you're going to send uh, email marketing to, uh, that can be problematic because the filter 
the contents of the filter will change over time. If somebody becomes your customer, they're no longer in your filter of prospects that you use to determine that you're going to send that email to. Well, and if they move out of that filter, then you're not really tracking them over time. You don't know, you can't track how many of our um, of the, the people that we sent to Campaign X to actually became customers because they're no longer in the filter. But if you do it by group, a group is static. It stays static over time, and um, it, it's a great means of, uh, on, a, on a, well, on a group basis, analyzing what you've accomplished. And then using those reports that are built uh, against the campaign group that you created, uh, you can do things like you know drill through and do segmentations and finer um, finer uh, iterations of your of the same campaign, so that you you know someone that you sent a broad initial campaign to, uh, and you got different varying kinds of responses, especially again if you use IntelliClick, which I'll come to here in a moment, um, where you got sort of a, a, a maybe a tepid response, but you got some response acknowledging that they got your message. Um, you might want to do one kind of email messaging to those kinds of users versus the ones who came back to you enthusiastically and were ready to buy. Um, so actually uh, further segmenting your, your groups uh, uh, down the line would be, the, would be the, you know, the next logical thing to do there. And, I'm, and now I'll talk just briefly about IntelliClick. So for those of you who are not familiar with IntelliClick, that's, it's a great uh, add-in for Goldmine that allows you to, um, to manage emailing um, emailing campaigning even better. And by the way, this is something that came up recently with a customer we were talking about, uh, talking to. Just because you use Outlook for your gold mine, um, or excuse me, just because you use Outlook for for sending emails, does not mean that you can't use the gold mine email client for marketing purposes, for sending emails. You can do both. Um, and if you don't have your email, if you, if you don't have your Goldmine email set up, talk to your Goldmine dealer. It's a very easy thing for them to do. Um, so if all you did was use it for outgoing marketing and for the return um, activity that happens as a result of that marketing, that would be fine. You could still have your, you know, your one-on-one -on -one emailing happen through, through Outlook itself. Um, I want to mention that because um, the email capability within Goldmine is a great um, uh, function for doing that outreach to prospects. IntelliClick takes this a step further, and if you'd like to learn more about it, again, talk to your VAR, talk with us. Um, uh, IntelliClick allows you to track the results of your email, so that when you send out an email and somebody clicks on a link in that email, uh, you can actually have the fact that they clicked on that link create a history record in your Goldmine database, which uh, sounds... Um, may sound trivial or it may sound exciting to you, but if, but if you think about it, um, if you can actually track what the results of your email marketing campaigns are, that takes you a huge step forward. You're not just sending emails out into the ether and hoping um, that people may be reading them. You actually know whether or not they're being opened and you know whether or not some action is being taken. And if they click on the link that says, I'm interested in product you know, B, then um, your further marketing to them can circle back and focus on product B for them. So, um, and Mastermind, by the way, has built-in uh, templates specifically for working with the data that gets put into your Goldmine database by IntelliClick. So, uh, it's, it's part of the standard package that goes out. Um, it's a reason both to get IntelliClick, and for that matter, it's a reason to sort of spread out the use of, of Mastermind within your organization as well, so they can leverage that great information they get back into Goldmine um, uh, as a result of email campaigns. Uh, so that's all I'm going to do on email marketing today. Tracking leads through the stages of the sale. So um, we have a big client who signed up with us at the end of last year to uh, create a whole series of reports that form the core of his sales management strategy. So as a sales manager, he wants to be able to view his entire pipeline, know how many prospects there are at each stage of the sale and what they're worth, uh, what they're worth, meaning how much, what is the actual dollar value of those of, the, of those forecast sales, and how long have they been in each stage, and he can take that information, that current information, and compare those numbers with his his, his historical success, uh, also derived using Mastermind reports. So the historical activity being things like you're seeing on the screen here, a report of the stages of the sale 
uh, for the last 12 months and how long each opportunity on average was in each of those stages of the sale for each of the different products that he's got. So we, um, uh, so uh, with that information, he can um, uh, either roll up the information across the whole organization or he can go to individual sales reps and he can say, so here's why you're not making the money you think you should be making. Here's where you can do more to fill in the pipeline. Uh, here's where you are slow going through, uh, you know, dealing with a certain stage and that might be, that might require some training or it might require some different uh, uh, backup materials. Um, Here's what you need to learn how to do better, um, whether it's prospecting or demonstrating or closing or whatever, because the numbers um, in the database don't lie. Well, they do lie if you don't have a system that requires the users to, the uh, sales reps to move their sales through these stages. That's something we'll get to here in a moment. But, um, but uh, if, they, if you do have a system that you are tracking, then you can use this as a powerful way to improve the success of your sales team. So, and to accomplish this system, um, this client had to lay out a lot of groundwork. But it's not rocket science. He just needed to examine his own sales process, lay it out in a logical, sequential series of steps, and then monitor the leads as they move through those steps. Uh, we, working with them, suggested some coding and some specifics about how to use opportunities, and we laid out the reports for them over a couple of months, working closely with them. Um, and you can but you can probably do this too. If you really want to get on top of your sales process and keep it reliably moving forward, it's a data-driven way to manage sales, um, but we've seen some very successful sales processes built around using this kind of information. Even if you don't feel up to creating this kind of comprehensive and methodical sales system, by the way, every sales organization using Goldmine can find some use for tracking leads through to a sale. So um, it may be that um, what I was talking about before about uh, just ensure using the, uh, the uh, lost leads approach to make sure uh, from a management standpoint just that your leads are getting followed up by on by somebody, or it may be a more methodical approach like the one that we're looking at here. Um, so, uh, and, and typically at different different levels, goldmine users, uh, goldmine using organizations want to have this information. So it may not be just you, or may not may not be just the sales rep or the sales manager. Executive management typically wants trustworthy sales forecasts, and this is one way to get them. Uh, and so you want them to be within a, re a reasonable margin of error so they can plan. Um, you can want to do this on the product level so that they can understand how well their products are doing in the marketplace. What are the, the, what are the blocks to actually selling them? Um, which ones are more successful than others? Which sales reps are more successful with, with which products and so on? Um, and, and then, of course, you do want to have that information available to sales managers and to the individual sales rep if they are, if they are, uh, you know, smart enough to be uh, involved in, in managing their own success. Um, so our purpose, by the way, with Mastermind is not to teach you how to manage sales. That's your business typically. Uh, but we can have an intelligent conversation with you about how your sales um, process should be reflected in Goldmine uh, and how that ought to look on the reporting end of it so that the whole system works and it's monitored and it's and the users are accountable. So in a future webinar, I, I will bring you, I hope, uh, a process like this in much more detail. Um, and we've got a number of customers that I've that I've talked to, uh, mastermind users that I've talked to, who have well managed stale sa uh, staged sales systems like this one using Goldmine. Uh, but if there's anybody on this call who would like to share your system in a future webinar and possibly get the benefit of comments and suggestions from dozens of other Mastermind users, not just Goldmine users generally, but Mastermind users also, about how you can do that potentially better, um, or if you just like to brag about what you've done using Mastermind uh, in the sales management arena, please let me know. Uh, we would love to include you in a future webinar. Again, that's you can either uh, contact me directly or you can... Um, uh, contact us through the LinkedIn uh, connection.
And by the way, if you're on this call and you're not in sales, but you see the benefit of tracking sales through stages in Goldmine and making Mastermind, using Mastermind to make it work, um, please talk to your sales team, your own sales team, about potentially implementing Mastermind. Then talk to ours. Get us involved in the conversation if that helps. You know, you already own the Mastermind software. This is just another way for your organization to make it pay off for you um, and, uh, you know, broaden your use of it and hopefully uh, get value all the way down the line. So our next topic is managing the sales call calendar, and this is one that I'm actually going to go over very lightly. Um, but again, this is uh, uh, potentially good uh, deep conversation for a full webinar. One of the core values of Goldmine or any CRM system is, is the methodical um, sales activity calendaring that results in reliable sales performance. Again, this goes back to our first topic. This means... Um, you know, having a methodical sales activity means having sales activities like calls and appointments scheduled, then executed in the real world, and the results recorded in history in Goldmine. As obvious as this may seem, a sizable number of Goldmine using companies simply leave it up to their sales reps to decide how or if they're going to use the Goldmine calendar. Um, and I can tell you the most successful Goldmine using organizations I see out there uh, actually have a prescribed means of using the calendar, of, follow, of at least scheduling activities and following through those uh, on the goldmine side. A salesman who doesn't, a salesperson who doesn't use the calendar or who does not keep it up for whatever reason can't, uh, for example, keep appointments. They can't call back at certain set times. Their, um, uh, their likelihood of success is dramatically reduced and that re reduces the likelihood of success for the overall sales team, and that should not be acceptable in your organization. You need to be able to hold your people accountable. And it's not just about accountability. It's, a, it's not about accountability from the top down. It's also about just the accountability of the sales rep themselves to, to you know, their own um, schedule and their own um, long-term effort to um, accomplish a certain level of sales. So... Um, so even more importantly than you know the individual, the or organization for the organization you need to have um, oversight of who has been contacted and who has not, as we talked about in that earlier report. Um, the this the calendar provides another means of both self management for the individual as well as top down management. And that makes sure that calls, get, calls and appointments don't get missed and leads don't fall into a black hole. It's really a way to support the sales rep. Um, uh, I'm going to actually switch over and pull up a pending call report here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, this is our past call report. I'm going to pull up. Now, in this case, I'm just going to use the... Um, the, uh, and actually, I need to close our create dialog here. I'm going to use the Goldmine toolbar here to pop up a mastermind report. And again, any mastermind report that you create, if you, there are a lot of users, I, I think, that don't even know this. Within your mastermind reports, you have a button on the taskbar that actually implants a report into a Goldmine taskbar here. And this might be your Goldmine taskbar, or it might be um, everyone in the organization's taskbar, or it might be just other selected Goldmine users. But you make it so that once you've laid out a report in a useful way, um, in this case it's going to be our pending calls report, um, that, uh, that report is just openable with a single click like I just did. It opens in Excel, it refreshes against the current Goldmine data, it literally just, you know, creating that, so-called creating that report is really just a matter of opening and refreshing the existing one. You don't have to go through any of the steps to recreate that report. Um, you know, every time you're going to use it, you just pop it open, and there it is. So this is a uh, this is our our call calendar for a particular user. This is for Nancy, and it shows week by week the scheduled calls that she's got on her sales calendar. In your organization, you probably are going to have a much denser looking table than this uh, because this goes across months and years, um, but. Uh, this is meant here really to give you the idea that you can present this as a calendar kind of uh, presentation. We've got Saturday and Sunday at the end of the week. Um, uh, and by the way, the order that these go in is, you know, 
uh, controllable by the end user. So here's a Sunday beginning week. We put them at the end here just because those tend, uh, in a business-to-business -business situation, Saturday and Sunday tend not to be uh, relevant for the sales calling. And um, so here is this calendar. So with an overview like this, <clears throat> excuse me, as a manager or as a sales rep, you can you basically see your territory. You're not seeing ge geography here, but you are seeing sort of a geography of time so that you, so that you know, um, do we have an overwhelming number of calls or appointments scheduled for a particular day or week? Or is this spread out in a doable fashion? Um, how does this compare from one sales rep to the next? So in this case, we've got one sales rep, but you know, we can easily switch to another one. So just by choosing a different name, we see their layout. See, ch switch to another name, you see the next layout. It's really very uh, simple. In this case, it's not a sales rep, so you don't see uh, a full, it doesn't look like a full calendar. Um, then what you do with your calendar over time, that's where this becomes crucial. So understanding it is the first step. The second step is doing something uh, more useful with it. So for example, let's say you do find a whole bunch of past due pending calls. Here's 20 past due pending calls from the year 2012 on Lori's calendar. Well, what are we going to do about these? Well, if there's only 20 of them, we might drill through and handle them one by one um, uh, with just going to, this, going to the uh, individual uh, record on the gold mine side. So, and by the way, uh, you may, not, may or may not know, in the newer version of Mastermind, version 7, we actually have a way not only to go to the record in Goldmine, to actually, but to actually pop up the activity that you're on so that you can do something with it. So um, if this call from last January 2012 needs to be moved up, going straight to the, to the activity in Goldmine and changing the date, well, that's a pretty efficient way to get that going the way it needs to be. Or assigning it to a different user would be a little bit uh, more uh, brutal <laughs> way of moving it up. But both of those things can be done. Or, um, uh, excuse me, I'm going to switch back to, to this one. You may want to take all 20 of these and just move up the dates. And you can do this, uh, again, in a very straightforward fashion in Excel, uh, either by changing the date right here, um, you just type over the date that's there, or you can add a new date that's based on the old one, move them all forward by one month so they're still spread out, or change them all to a single date. Um, whatever you choose to do, you can use Updater, uh, the mastermind component here, once you've changed that date, to cause all of those pending sale records, or sorry, pending call records, to move up back into the working part of this sales rep's um, uh, schedule. So we'll go into that more in detail in a in a web, webinar in the future, but I wanted to sort of hint at the at the possibilities there. Um, next topic is normalizing a database field. So here we're talking about actually getting into the database itself. And when we talk about normalizing a field, what we mean is reducing the items in all the records that contain that field to a set of reportable values. So uh, in the example that I that I started to show up here before, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more detail. But uh, in the example that I showed before, we were seeing um, a a messed up uh, record type or contact type field uh, that had lots of different possible values in it. I just about guarantee, if you've not been actively managing your gold mine data, you have junk drawer fields. You have fields that have typos, that have old ways of designating a certain code. Um, that potentially, very, very, very likely, are causing you to miss sales opportunities because you've got things miscoded. Um, and sometimes just a typo can result in a great opportunity falling through the cracks of your, of your system. So uh, normalizing a field, as I said, means if you've got, if you've got text, that um, that text is formatted in a standard way, that your company names and your database uh, you know, all start with a capital letter and otherwise have lowercase letters, um, just for example, or that your addresses have a certain format. If you're talking about fields that have um, a limited potential values in them, um, so for example, the, uh, the, co the contact type or record type field, might have only a short list of, of valid lookup codes, then normalizing is means um, reducing the actual values in the data across all of the records in your database to match that limited set of lookup values. And again, because you make, you make decisions over time 
uh, different ones about, well, what should our lookup codes be, for example, for the record type or for the, for the contact type field, um, you're going to need to be able to transform your Goldmine data to match that new way of doing things, and that's not a trivial process, typically. Um, working with Mastermind actually makes that makes it pretty easy. Um, so let's just look at what that's going to look like. So I, I'm going to go through this process here. So you start with an overview report uh, to know what it is that you have in your data. You uh, include the related fields, and when I say related, I mean not just the ones that you intend to clean up, but ones that are related to to that field. So for example, if you're if we're talking about again the customer uh, or the contact type field, where you, something might be a customer or a prospect. In the, in the contact type field, well, you've got other information in your Goldmine database, like the number of, uh, 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 well, their, their past purchasing behavior, hopefully. You've got completed sales in there. You can use that information uh, together with, um, with Updater to uh, actually put the right code into that record. So you don't have to go through them one by one, necessarily. You can use the other Goldmine data to identify um, uh, you know whether it's a customer or a prospect, and uh, update that field accordingly. That's that's just one example. Um, another pretty common one that I've seen is if you've got geographic territories um, or regions in your database, um, but some of the some of those regions or territories are either mis um, uh, miscoded in the database or they're just left blank because um, you know importing or uh, you know adding records resulted in new records that didn't have that field filled in. Well, you can use the other information in your Goldmine database, your zip codes, your area codes, your um, uh, uh, states, uh, if that's how they, how they correlate, and use that and group them accordingly to get, and then use Updater to, uh, again, to fix that information very quickly in your database. If you're not doing that, then again, you, you run into that danger of having uh, opportunities fall through the cracks. Um, so that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you at least on that on that tab. I'm going to um, cover the. Actually, I'm, what I want to do is we've got a short amount of time here yet, uh, and so we're going to. I'm not going to actually go to a report and show you that one. Uh, instead, we'll move on to the next one. And again, if that if that topic is one that's very interesting to you, if any of these is, please notify us through that LinkedIn poll that this is a topic you'd like to see us do an in depth webinar on. So this next one I'm going to talk about is, is cleaning up a data import. Everybody, sooner or later, imports data into Goldmine. Um, hopefully, they're Im you're importing it both in sort of large amounts by, uh, by you know, let's say, pulling in leads from a trade show that you got, have in Excel spreadsheets, or you're importing them from other, other sources. But you also have in, uh, information being imported one by one if you're using web forms to populate Goldmine records. Um, which uh, oddly, again, people oftentimes don't aren't aware of. Goldmine has a very has a great web import feature that allows you to set up a page on a website that um, that feeds directly into Goldmine. If you need to know more about that, let us know. Talk to your Goldmine dealer; they can easily get you set up with that. Um, but let's just talk about the essentially what you need to be able to do is manage the data that enters your Goldmine database and normalize it or make it standard. Um, so that it fits together with the other information that's already in your database. Again, this process starts with an overview report, um, looking at all the similar records and making sure that you don't have a lot of outliers because of from the new data that you imported. Um, and then once you identify uh, the overall database and see how the newly imported data fits into it, then you can focus on just that newly imported data and um, and uh, go through the remaining steps to get it cleaned up. Typically that means completing um, the data that's missing, finding the ones that are blank and actually entering them in there. And of course you can do that with Updater just by putting in a single value on the on your drill down sheet in a mastermind report and then with that single value in there highlighted, hit Updater, it just fills in those that missing data. Or uh, it may be a somewhat more complicated thing. The value that should be in there may be really dependent on some other uh, information in your database, um, and you can use Excel formulas on the Excel spreadsheet to do that. This is all things that we can we will talk about more in depth when we get to our data import uh, webinar. Uh, and then, of course, 
the final things that you do once you've imported the, some new leads would be assign them to the appropriate person and schedule uh, phone calls so that those actually happen. And with uh, Goldmine, with Mastermind and Goldmine processes together, you can do that pretty effectively so that an import should not be a, you know, a, a multi-day effort. It should be something that you can do really within a pretty convenient period of time. Uh, despite the fact, or including the fact, that when you do the import, you will never have perfect information to start with, and um, in all likelihood, there will be some human error along the way that has information go to the wrong places or whatever, and you can use Mastermind and Updater to clean that up. So the last topic that I'm going to talk about here briefly uh, is actually just a, a sample topic uh, out of a large list of potential um, technical topics that we could cover in our webinars uh, with Mastermind. And again, we want to invite your feedback on this. Um, and that is working with dates and date ranges. So, um, and although this one doesn't apply to a specific job function, it is one of the more important topics we usually cover in our Mastermind training. If you need training on working with dates or numeric values or notes in Goldmine, Call us up and get that training. It's worth doing, and we do that one-on-one -on -one with you um, across uh, GoToMeeting. So we're actually working in your database. But just on this topic broadly, once you master working with dates, you can use calendar units like years, quarters, months, weeks as selectors inside your reports um, rather than the sort of traditional always having to hand type in a start date and an end date, for example, where it's the beginning, you know, first day of the month and how many days does November have in it and so on. Um, you just, you know, choose November and you're on and, you, and you, you're on with your report. So that allows you to do things like lay out reports uh, like calendars, do month-to-month -month analysis of activities, analyze your sales cycle length, do uh, really anything else that involves a date range in your, in your goldmine data. The key thing here is choosing which date field out of many of them that are in Goldmine contains the information you want to, to key off of. So for example, when a client asks me to create a report that shows each month's opportunities in order by probability, my first question is going to be, what do you mean by each month's opportunities? You mean the ones that were started this month, the ones that were completed this month, all of the ones that were open during this month, which is a little bit harder, um, the ones that... Uh, you know, it, it really could be it could be a, a variety of different possibilities, and um, there is no right or wrong answer to that question. It's a preference on the part of the of the user. Um, so I'm going to just briefly kind of switch over on this one. I do want to show the screen here on this. So. Um, so in this case, let's just take the report that we're already on here, and we'll talk about now our our the date that that our pending calls are scheduled to happen. This is already a, a date that's built into the to the report here. Um, I will uh, kind of unbuild this date for the moment. First, I'm going to take out the individual weeks. Uh, and then I'm going to ungroup our dates here. This is going to be a very brief uh, discussion of this, and then we, we, we'll come back another time and do a full webinar on uh, date manipulation, numeric uh, field manipulation, all that sort of thing. So uh, what people don't often don't realize is, first, we've added a number of really convenient tools for working with dates and numerics in the new version of Mastermind. Um, but we've also... Um, uh, you you also just may not be familiar with the date grouping function that's in here. I'm going to ungroup our on date here. So bring this back down to just a raw field that contains a date. And notice I do this. You can do this with any date that's in Goldmine. You can do this with your, um, you know, the dates that records were last updated. You can do this with the dates that um, the date that a uh, uh, forecast sale was created as opposed to the date that it's forecast to actually uh, come through as a sale and so on. Any of this works. Um, we have, in order to, to do date grouping, we actually named this field date range because typically this is how people build date ranges using um, date fields in Mastermind. And it's this easy to essentially take this date and group it by years, months, and days. When we created this original report, um, this all this was done automatically on the on date field of your pending activities, but it was only done against that one field. You, there are actually quite a few fields in Goldmine available to do this. 
Um, I'll choose years, months, and days as my as my calendar groupings here. By the way, we always leave all auto just checked on um, so that the earliest date and the last date in your data um, will be the sort of the starting and stopping point. You don't have to um, leave those on. You can just choose to have all the dates before a certain date just get thrown into one bucket that you uh, remove or after a certain date. Um, but this is sort of the typical way this is done. So years, months, and days, I hit OK, and right away this field is reordered into years, months, and the specific um, days, and that allows me then to um, essentially do that calendaring activity that I had before, or use these fields up at the top as filters to say, give me just 2013, just the month of March in 2013, and I don't know, list the companies that we have scheduled calls for. So that, while that's very quick and, and, and uh, probably hopefully simple looking, um, there's a lot of depth to that topic, and we can do a webinar on that. So those are the ones that I wanted to introduce briefly. Now, these, I, I have one more set that I'm actually going to show you. Um, uh, and this list, I'm not going to go through these one by one. I just wanted to say that we have a lot of other possible topics that we've thought of that we will um, put out there for you to consider as ones that you want for us to do. Um, webinars on, um, and uh, these will be listed out on the, uh, at least on the LinkedIn site as, as possible ones that you can pick from. Um, many of these are just technical mastermind kinds of things, and some of them are more broad, uh, you know, how do I manage my people in goldmine kinds of questions. So uh, as you can imagine, there's, there are, there's a wide range of, of topics that we can cover with Mastermind. Our job here is not to teach you how to use Goldmine itself, um, although everything that we do has some implications for how you use Goldmine. So it's worth knowing about these. So these are just some other topics, and as I mentioned, we'll put those out on the list. Uh, excuse me, out on the, uh, out on the LinkedIn. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to tell you what our, what our uh, next month's um, thing is, and you can see it right there on the screen, this is going to be our webinar that we've already scheduled for next month. We're going to go into detail of how to find and activate unworked prospects. So it's, it's the topic that I alluded to earlier and went into just a little bit as, a, as an example, but we'll get into that more in, de in, in depth. We'll do that on April 18th. The topic that comes after that, and we're going to try to do these monthly, is going to be very much dependent on your preferences, what you tell us through LinkedIn you would like for us to do. Um, so that's the date for the next one, and um, here's what, what I'm going to ask for you to do next. Now, and by the way, when this webinar is over, uh, I will go back and look and see what questions people have put in. Um, we had a very large attendee uh, attendance today, so I may not be able to get to all of the questions, um, uh, but we will try to handle them in some uh, prudent way. So um, what we want you to do next, go to LinkedIn if you're uh, – most people are members of LinkedIn. And most professional people are link members of LinkedIn these days anyway. Uh, join the Mastermind Users Group. You need to search for that name. When you, when you find it, just click the button that makes you a member of that group. Answer the LinkedIn poll that we put out there. Vote on which topics you'd like for us to cover next. Um, right now, the only topics that, um, that, are avail that are listed there are the ones that we um, actually we chose uh, sort of broadly from the, from the, the uh, from the list that we had in today's webinar. But if there's other ones that you've seen or other ones that you'd like for us to do, um, please put those in the comments of that LinkedIn poll. Just go down to the bottom of the poll, and there's a place where you can add comments and, and really want to get your feedback. Initiate discussions on, the link, on Mastermind LinkedIn. That's the way we want to build our user group, um, our, our active user community. Uh, on LinkedIn, and I will moderate those discussions and uh, try to keep things moving forward as well as answering technically anything that needs to be answered there, but we really want for, for you all to um, help each other as much as possible. Uh, and then finally, if you've got private suggestions, things that you don't want to put out in public there on LinkedIn, uh, send those to stephanie at mastermind.net, or you can send them to me, rob at mastermind.net, and uh, I will be happy to address those and, and use them to to help our, our, our user community move forward. So with that, I'm going to uh, switch over and see if there is uh, uh, anything else in our 
uh, go to webinar dialogue that I need to address, but I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us online this morning. Look forward to seeing you uh, in a uh, almost a month's time, and uh, uh, I Rob? yes, go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you. We had uh, one gentleman, Ed, asked if he if um, you can move through those twenty calls that were back on the when we were discussing the calendars. If you could go ahead and show what that would be like with Updater, if you wouldn't mind the. If you still have that report. Oh, up. to move through those 20 calls. Okay, yeah, we can do that pretty simply yeah, go ahead and while we're still that. on here. And let me bring up, bring that up. Okay, so uh, I think this is the one that had the 20 calls. So how would this look in Updater to update this? Um, let's, suppose, yeah. let's suppose what we want to do. I'm going to actually do this in a little bit more complicated way. Rather than change all these to a particular date, I'll move them all forward by 30 days, just for example. So I'm going to take... I'm going to use a formula here and say we're going to equal that that equals uh, the previous value plus 30 days, and that actually fills in the whole column. So each one of these is now 30 days later than the one that was there. And you can imagine with Excel formulas, you can really do anything. You can you can have it. You know, if it's an A, move it forward one day. If it's a D, move it forward 10 days, or uh, however you want to do that sort of thing. Uh, and then once you've made that change. The way to work with updater would be launch updater um, uh, using that source column. So we're going to choose, uh, in this case, the calendar because that's where these scheduled activities are. And we're going to use as our source column one, which is the highlighted one there. What we're going to be updating is the date field within the calendar. And so I'm going to go down here to, uh, whoops, to date. And basically, that's what it would take. So when I hit OK, in fact, I, I can even I'll take this off of test run. And um, oh, so it asks. Uh, it does ask me, do I want if we put a dummy date in here? Do we want to use those? In this case, I know I have no dummy dates, so I'm just going to say yes. And that quickly, I will have taken 20 leads and advanced them for, by one month within within our calendar. So if I go over here to uh, I'll double click on unlimited technologies and we'll look at the pending activity and see if that is now scheduled instead of for uh, uh, January 12th, if it's scheduled for uh, February 11th, 30 days later. So when we go to pending here now, you see that February 11th is the new date on that, on that scheduled activity. Um, by the way, if you use Updater and you decide that you've made a mistake or you only wanted to temporarily change values and move them back, um, Updater has that capability. Uh, I can switch all that demo data, in this case, back to where I started. So now when I go over to Unlimited Technologies, that item is scheduled back in January again. Carnegie, was there any other question there that we needed to, to handle? I don't think so. I think some are uh, more personal ones that you'll address uh, after. Okay. But uh, I think we're pretty well. Okay, great. Just well, so, so everybody, just so everybody does know, we we you will receive the, the archived webinar tomorrow mm -hmm. automatically. Uh, that that was one question that came up uh, ah. a few times. Yes, whether you attended or not, if you were registered for this, you will receive the recording, archived recording. Okay. Now I hope that in future meetings it won't be quite as. Um, uh, as rushed as this one was, but uh, I hope that you got uh, a lot of value out of uh, attending this webinar, and we will look forward to your participation in our Mastermind user group on LinkedIn. Thanks very much.